In the wake of the disastrous 2004 Olympics, the U.S. men's basketball team revamped their system and as a result have gotten the program back on track. One of the mainstays of the team has been Carmelo Anthony, and it's no surprise why he enjoys playing on the team, as he's often the second or third best player, which ironically often propels him to being the most effective player on the court. While Melo is responsible for so much more in New York, playing for the U.S., his role becomes much more of a spot-up sharp shooter. His three-point shooting is his most lethal weapon when playing in FIBA, and there are three reasons why. First, the FIBA three-point line distance is 22 feet 1.7 inches, which is a full 19 inches closer than the NBA line. While it might not seem like much, it certainly is a factor when shooting from distance. The next reason is the prevalence of zone defense against the U.S. Because the other teams lacked the physical dominance of the United States, they felt their only hope was to zone, protect the basket, and hope the U.S. missed shots. But when you turn Carmelo Anthony into a spot-up shooter, you can see how deadly he is. Rarely would their opponents have a defender near 6'9 who could close out on him, so not only were his feet set for seconds beforehand, the defender wasn't going to do much to bother him. The third and most important reason why he is so effective is he's almost never the best player on his team while out on the court. Notice how Kobe and LeBron can suck up so much attention from the defense that he doesn't have to do anything to generate his shot. Kobe and LeBron initiate with their penetration against the zone, and it's only a matter of time till they find Melo along the perimeter for a good look at a jumper. In 2008, he played together with LeBron, Kobe, and Kevin Durant, so he was almost as an afterthought to the defense as he continued to bury jumper after jumper. While I can't blame the other teams for trying to play zone, this just isn't the solution when LeBron can see over the entire defense and make pinpoint skip passes. Let's contrast this to his playing days in New York over the last few seasons. Rather than playing with the likes of KD, LeBron, Kobe, or even Darren Williams or Andre Iguodala, let's take a look at the leaders in minutes played for the Knicks over the last three seasons. What's scary about this is that J.R. Smith appears to be the only other guy that could be aggressive in the half court and create his own shot. And we all remember how inconsistent J.R. was with the Knicks, right? On every possession for the last three years, Carmelo has had no one else who could be a threat to penetrate, draw defenders, and kick out, leaving him to isolate after the slightest bit of initial ball movement in the triangle. And I could see why Anthony would feel the need to isolate so much, since he wasn't getting that many catch and shoot opportunities at all. Over the past three seasons, he's isolated at a minimum of 23.7% of his total possessions, and he's ranked quite high doing them even though they generate some extremely difficult shots where the defense can completely load up on him without a care in the world if a teammate attempts the shot. So not only did the Knicks run the triangle way too slowly with an alarming lack of attention to detail in terms of setting screens and cutting hard, but that just increased the level of difficulty on a star who already bears the weight of the entire city on his shoulders. Compare that to the isolations he takes during FIBA play, and you can see that he only isos half the amount of time, and again, typically has a defender that isn't at an NBA level, since those guys, if there are any, would already be checking LeBron, KD, or Kobe. As you can see in 2012, having so much talent allows Melo to work one-on-one -on -one with a lot more space. And when you have shooters and drivers like Russ and Harden alongside him, there's no way anybody can handle him one-on-one. -on -one. It's not to say that the catch and shoots Melo gets don't work for the Knicks, it's the opposite. When they actually run the offense correctly and force a rotation before Melo catches the ball, he's deadly. It's those moments that you can see why he's such a devastating player in a triangle offense, and just needs more talent around him to make him better. And it's not to say that he needs top 5 talent in the world as teammates to be successful. He simply needs to replace the Raymond Feltons, Shane Larkins, Jason Smiths, and even Aaron Aflalos of the world with real threats like Derrick Rose and even Brandon Jennings. 
If Melo can feed off of their threat, as well as the passing genius of Joe Kim Noah, and get more space when Courtney Lee and Porzingis are out there, we can finally start to see the Carmelo Anthony that plays for Team USA. A player who can spot up for three-point shots with some space and hit at an elite level, and someone who can leverage the triangle offense, primarily from the pinch post, to get easier shots with more space because the defense is forced to respect his teammates even a little bit more. While Melo has gotten the reputation of being an isolationist ball stopper, it seems clear his hand was forced into those shots due to the severe roster limitations. The key here is that Melo is not on the same level as LeBron and KD. He needs a little bit more help. On Team USA, as the number two or number three option, he ends up being the most productive player on the court. If the Knicks can give him a reliable sidekick or two, we'll see a much better version of Carmelo. One that will certainly help improve an offense that ranked 24th last year.